Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So I'll do unboxing of Senada Saber electric bicycle and I'll try to make it quick and we're gonna go for a ride, speed test, also variety riding experience, off-road, uphill test, which I didn't try before for example, and we'll see if this Saber model a little bit different from previous one I reviewed. So let's open up and check it out. Here's how it will look from the top. And that's how it will look from the side. So we're gonna do assembly quick and then go for a ride. Quick unboxing of the small box which came inside. Let's see what is inside. So you get pedals, wrench tool. Wow, they give you a full set of Allen keys. User manual, the charger, battery charger, some bolts and nuts, and some zip ties. I think you would need to attach the rack. It's 2M charger. So the first step I'll do, straighten up this fork, remove some cover, all the protection, loosen up the top bolt, okay, straighten out, tighten a little bit, in order to attach the handlebar, you would need to remove these four bolts with Allen key. The next step, you would take the handlebar, bring all the way up. So the red button on this side, on the right side going to be. And reattach the same bracket you just removed with the same four bolts. And you will tighten them up, cross tightening. So you would tight one bolt, then another, another, and another. And the next step, you would need to attach the wheel. Before attaching the wheel, I recommend to remove these nuts uh, together with a washer from both sides. This way it will be much easier to install the wheel. Before attaching the wheel, you would need to remove this fork protector. Now it's time to attach the wheel. So you bring the bike up, insert the wheel, remove this. Make sure you insert the brake disc between the pads first, and then you would just drop it on the axle like this, and that's it. Then you would attach the locking washer, which actually you don't really need for aluminum fork, but they include it, and if they include it, I usually attach it. Then you would attach just washer and the nut. And you do the same thing on both sides, and then you tighten up. First I do with hands, and then I use a wrench to tighten them up. Next step, you would need to attach the front fender. It's super easy. You would remove this bolt from here. And then attach the headlight first. And then you would remove bolts from this side and from another side and insert the fender. And the uh, fenders you would reattach the same nut you just removed from the top. Then you would remove this bolt and reattach the fender. And then you would align it and tighten them up. And once you attach the fender, that will look like this. You can uh, readjust position of the headlight by screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver over here. So it will move down a little bit like this. And that's how it will look. And now it's time to attach the rack. So in order to attach the rack, you would need to remove these two bolts from both sides to using the Allen key. Once you remove the bolts, you just simply reattach with the same bolts you just removed. I'll start from the bottom. And then I'll move to the top.
Then you will take this cable from the head, uh, rear tail light, and you would need to plug in right over here. Okay, make sure you match. This should be arrow on both sides, and you just match it and push it from both sides like this. And then you would reattach with the zip ties they included around the frame going along the rack. And the bike is almost assembled now. The next you would need to attach the pedals. Very important to attach right side to the right, left to the left. On this part you'll find letter R, so it means for the right side. Another pedal will have letter L. And you just... You can also put some grease if you have, so it will be much easier to attach and remove it if you need it. And pedals you don't have to tighten very well because it will be hard to remove later. They're going to tighten up by themselves while when you're going to be pedaling. And now you do the same thing on another side. And that's how you assemble the bicycle. If you never assembled the bicycle before, I recommend to take it to the bicycle shop. They can assemble for you, adjust the brakes, derailleur, and make sure everything tighten up well. And before ready to ride, I'm going to check every bolts and nuts to make sure they are tightened to correct new meter torque. Also, I will adjust over here, make the cable very nice attached. I will put uh, like uh, correct air pressure in the tires charge the battery until the green light on the charging block completely green and I recommend to charge the battery full for the first time and here's how the Sabre bike will look once you assemble it I put uh, 25 psi in the tires on the rear and 20 on the front I charge completely the battery and just want to show you how it will look on this bike and I'm 5'11 this bike actually very comfortable seat. It's a hard tail and it can go off-road, which we're going to take it today as well. Uh, the position is pretty comfortable. It should be a very powerful bike as well. We're going to take it in the mountain and also for the speed test. So I want to go over some spec on this bicycle and then we'll go for a ride. I'm in different colors. This one is kind of a darker blue, like ocean blue, I guess, with some sparkles, like metallic sparkles in it. Very beautiful color, I love it. And Sonata bikes do a very good job on the painting, I noticed. Every single bicycle I get from them have very nice painting job. The frame actually been used for the last few years already. Looks like the same frame, which is very light and strong. I never saw any post about negative so the frame is great also this frame come with a front basket attachment you can attach the basket or rack on the front the rear rack already included i know that the real rack now much longer than used to be so you get kind of extension you get headlight which is bright and also you get a tail light the tail light come with the braking light and also the signal turn signals it's very simple to switch by pressing over here right or left middle will be turned off it comes with a loud horn it says uh tectro brakes but it's only the level like tectro and i'll show you the brakes itself as well half throttle this one is power cut off so when you press on it it will cut off the power in the throttle so don't be surprised if the throttle doesn't work. Just press this button and it will activate it. It's a safety feature. Always comes on Senada Saber for safety because the bike is very powerful. 1,000 watt. And the brakes is 180 millimeters mechanicals. So basically pulling cable. And it's another brand, Philel for calipers. So usually, I think on most of the models come with the same brakes, so I never have really problem with the brakes. The only thing, they are mechanical, they are not as the same as hydraulic, so you have to push, push really hard to uh, stop. You can take this bike off-road easily because nice terrain tires, and it's a 26 by 4 with reflector on the side, and it's by in 
Nova brand. And I think I have experience with the same brand on my other bicycles, which is really good actually, tires. The front, the crank set is by Will Top, which is a pretty good size. Uh, it's come with Tourney derailleur and Shimano freewheel and Shimano shifter, seven speed. It comes with the SW900 large display. On the display you can find USB port, you can charge your phone or attach additional headlight, so it's very useful. It comes with a lot of information uh, on this display. The seat, as I said before, the same, large and comfortable. And I notice they start to make ventilation in controller box. Over here is a controller inside. And uh, looks like they are making ventilation. So the controller will have some air to breathe. The motor, they say it's 1000 watt and it's a Senada. So it's now Senada branded motor. Comes with dual mud guards, which is useful if you're riding off-road in the mud or rain. The handlebar is 27 inch wide. It comes with wagon leather grips, which is very comfortable to hold as well. And uh, controller right over here. So the, when you, I have video how to use this as well. I will post link in description. And now it's time to go for a ride. All right, so let's test it out to see actually how this new Sabre 2024 model, I guess, perform. I did review a few of them already, and I noticed like used to be different motor, and it comes with different power, but I'm gonna stop on the stop sign, okay? And then I'm gonna go to pedal assist level five, because the throttle is the attached to pedal assist. So basically, if you're riding in pedal assist level one, the throttle will go only to the pedal assist speed on the level one, it will not go any faster. So let's see, um, I'm gonna count to three and go. One, two, three, and let's go. Throttle only. Uh, based on the GPS, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29 miles an hour which is actually not bad at all uh, I don't remember exactly how much the other one model was I think about the same so the throttle only and I weighed 215 pounds maybe a few pounds more today but still let's consider 215 and now I'm gonna try to switch oops to gear number seven and go with pedaling and I'll tell you it's a 19 24 26 29 30 Uh, looks like it was jumping, uh, but I think very slow 30, it's kick 34 miles an hour. I'm not sure if it's true. Uh, display show me a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure how real the speed is, but at least 30 for sure. Uh, which is good on short distance, 30 miles. And I didn't really pedal hard. And the ghost pedaling started around 28, most likely. So you can go 29 pretty easy on this bike. And I'm gonna go to pedal assist level one. 
and gear number four. So I usually don't do test the pedal assist level one to five. And the reason is because I don't see any reason to do it because right now I change it to speed unlimited. By changing to speed unlimited, it completely change all the settings. So when you receive the bike, you can basically adjust it on the programming number eight uh, to the speed you want to. And it will adjust all these pedal assist levels. But the pedaling is very nice on this bike. I'm gonna turn headlight just to have it on. But what I'm gonna do now, I will turn off Let's see, I'm gonna turn off the power to zero and try just to pedal it as a regular bicycle. I'm gonna go to gear number three, about eight miles an hour, but gear number two makes the bicycle easy to pedal. I think I still need to adjust the derailleur on the gear number two. It's easy to do it. If you need, if your derailleur is keeping, you can do it by yourself or take it to any bike shop that can do, do it for you within a few minutes. And then, yeah, it's actually not bad pedaling. The pedaling is great on this bike at a speed about nine months an hour. So this bike should be great for off-road, uh, city, I guess any terrain and I'm gonna go for check the brakes go to pedal assist level 5 and I'm gonna get to speed probably about 20 miles an hour let's see and I'll stop by the car actually 22 and I'll stop it's I guess the same way as all the mechanical brakes, they don't stop right away. That's why I always advise them to get hydraulic, but for some reason they put mechanical. Nothing bad about these brakes, they are not squeaking, they work perfectly as normal, but they are uh, mechanical. And this bike comes with a horn, and also with the bell. So you got two horn and bell. That's cool, huh? Extra. And the walk mode is right here. I do have like a few videos already how to use this, how to assemble. This bike very similar to previous models, but I see some upgrades. The fork works fine on this bike. And it's a good fork, uh, looks like adjustable and it's yeah it's good so i'm gonna check it out off-road later but now we're gonna go for to take it to the uphill test and see how it will do uphill And that's the difference between electric bicycle and road bicycle, the speed. It can go much faster. And that's why people like need to ride with very care and be careful not to be hidden by the car also not to hit anyone on your way because you're going you're going to faster than most of the um, bicycles on the road usually 30 miles an hour that's pretty fast so let's see how fast it can get over here on the throttle only on the longest stretch uh, so far 20 21 28 29, 30, 
Actually, it keep turning very solid. It does not, yeah, it does not drop at all. Very solid bike, 30 miles an hour. And uh, it's uh, affordable also. Very solid Tori. Let's see if I can make it on the green light. A very solid Tori so far, and it's a little bit windy here. Yeah, now the wind reduces speed. And actually going a little bit up. This road going a little bit up. That's why we're going uphill. So 30 miles an hour with me on top. Very solid. And looks like I'm getting about 1,200 of what peak. 1242, 12, yeah, looks like 12 and a half peak pound. And the battery didn't even sub. Thirty miles an hour, still 30, 31. Wait, 34, no. That was wrong numbers. GPS got tired, probably overheated GPS. But it's going 30, sometimes 30 and a half on the display. And now we're gonna stop. Actually, it's not bad stopping uh, for mechanical brakes, but you have to push harder than mechanic, uh, than hydraulic. But I like the mechanical because it's, for me, it's much easier was to adjust. But this bike is very smooth and the performance actually is just getting better on this bike. I think it used to be a little bit faster, but they did many improvements on this bike. Um, I love this bike so far for speed on the road, very good stability, come with many features like horn, turning signals, and I believe this bike has also cruise control. You press the throttle and minus, I think, you're holding the throttle and keep the, click the minus. I do have video on that on the older version, so you can check link in description most likely to see how to use it. And so now I'm getting close to the hill. Wow, this bike actually really torquey. I should, I will make probably uh, also a zero to 20 probably to see how fast I can accelerate and um, it can go very easily on this bike, very solid. I was riding about two and a half miles over here, three miles, and the battery didn't even suck. I might do a range test as well on this bike later if I have time, but we're gonna do first a uh, moment of truth. If this bike still can climb it, I think last time it was about eight or nine miles an hour, I honestly don't remember, but it doesn't matter because this is a new model. And let's see how it will go. I'll count to three, one, two, and three. It's about 40 miles, it's just kicking, but I test all of them, 80 miles an hour, and then it will start to slow down probably. Now it's... Uh, Says 13 miles an hour, 12, 10. And so far it's still going. Nine miles an hour. 
So eight miles, pretty much good for 1,000 watt motor. And so far it's between eight to nine. So that's usually what the eight, 100, 1,000 watt motor and the peak power, let's see. Actually the peak, it's only 124. That's kind of very small peak power for some reason. So it got here about eight miles, yeah, eight miles an hour right now, all the way to the top. The motor actually works surprisingly very quiet because I know like some of the motors start to make Wait, now it starts to make loud, but yeah, the motor works good on this bike. So far it didn't make any noises and let's see. And I said before that this mountain damaged many motors actually. I think some of the company doesn't want to send me bikes because if I do the test over here, it might not to perform very well. And as you can see, after testing this bike on 1000 watt, I start to get air 8, which is a motor air. I'm going to turn it off. And I also was getting 9, which also related to the motor. And actually the throttle stopped working. That's kind of strange. The good that I have pedals and now again air cord number two, number eight, all kind of air cords. Oh, now it works. Maybe it's overheated. Oh, now it's good. Oh yeah, now it's good. Oh yeah. So about 50 minutes later, so far it works fine now again. So we'll see if I can go faster now <clears throat> without any air cord because I was getting like 0, 2, 0, 8 and also I was getting like 0, 9 which I never got actually before. It's a motor I think as well. Today is day 2 actually because when I finish the mountain, as you could see, it's climbed the hill pretty well with eight miles an hour to the top hill. And as soon as I said, the motor doesn't make any sounds, works great. Suddenly, the motor starts to make some noises, and I got air code 08. 09, 02 because of the brakes when I hold it, it's not a problem, it disappears. And I talked to some other bikes, they told me that's probably because overheated controller, because actually I did road three miles on high speed, top speed, throttle only, and then I went on the crazy mount, like here, as you could see. But today, there is no air code anymore, everything works fine. Once it's cooled down, it took about 10 15 minutes to cool down. And I'm gonna take it off road. As you can see, it's a beautiful day. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So, off road driving is a little bit different. So, I put a front air uh, like about 15 psi and the rear about 19. Uh, on the pavement, I have 25 rear and front was 20. Actually, it's performed really good on the pavement and off road. I might do need to reduce a bit more later, but I'll just keep it this way. Usually I keep about 10 in the front, 15 in the rear. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, everybody. Yeah. So that area is kind of uh, risky because it's really thin and then if you stop, you may fall down the hill over there. And we're going to try this first mountain. I guess I will just try to get closer because I put too much air pressure on the tires. But I'm going to see if it can climb easier. And I put on 10 as well, 5, so it gives you more torque. 
Oh yeah, I didn't even push the pedals hard. Okay. So this is one of the kind of scary here, I guess. But it made it good. Now I can just reduce the pedal is level 3. And it is a little bit wet somewhere. I can see a little bit still some spring. Oh yeah, it's a little bit wet over here. But yeah. I do have mud guards which should give me some protection. Looks like it does. But so far we're good. Beautiful weather. And I think um, the best way would be probably to put much less PSI. The forks the fork works good on this bike so far. A bit more wet over here. So far the bike doing well. It looks like um, Metal CS level 2 is perfect for off-road, about 12 miles an hour. And if you need more speed, you can switch easily to pedal assist level 3. And it's pretty good. Um, I have about 15 miles already on this battery. And I can see only one bar drop when I'm in power. If there's no power, it's going back to full charge. Uh, if you want me to do the range test on this bicycle, comment below. I can do probably later on. Uh, on the full battery charge on flat at a high speed I'm gonna ride. Hopefully the controller will not overheat. So far I was riding the bike for about 10 miles. I'm sorry, five miles. Yeah, about five miles from my home. And the airport never came back. So far so good. So basically uh, it does have uh, protection. Okay, now I'm going uphill. Again, number four, and pedal assist level two. It's going hills, uh, it's basically eating the hills easily, uh, enough power in it. I don't know if I need even to switch the gears right now. It's going good. I might just increase the speed to level two, three, because it's a little bit steep over here. But also, uh, as um, after the rain, a lot of corrosion, like damages on the road over here. And of course, this one is hardtail. The best way for off-road, as I said earlier, 10 and 15 PSI in the tires. But it's going uphill pretty well. I need to slow down, I guess, because my tires it's a little bit high on PSI pressure, air pressure, and it's a beautiful day today. Yeah, it's uh, made this hill easily with minimum workout. Well, I do pedal, I get workout, but I'm on gear number four. Again, uh, I have four more gears to go. But this bike is pretty powerful. And if you want to get one, check link in description. I'm gonna have a additional discount. And what I like about some other bikes, they are more like in budget category, power bicycles, but they do have good support. They'll send you all the parts you need to get that fixed. And most companies usually don't pay for labor, and I think it's another easier. But they always send me either controller or anything I need to. And most likely, 
this bicycle is just fine so far no air course anymore and i love to ride off-road more than actually on the pavement because not only you get beautiful viewers but also less cars fresh air and you don't have to stop on every stop sign you just need to be careful not to run over anyone <laughs> but that's why i don't go more than 20 miles usually about 15 and some people want fast bicycles like over 40 miles an hour and they think they're gonna ride it off-road on that speed you guys are gonna kill someone so this bicycle actually perfect 30 miles and now it's good but i think um, i need to check again on the settings because this bike might be able to go even more than 30 miles an hour because they told me it's supposed to go like 20, 35 and i know the previous model was like 32 35 with no load and right now it's 30 regardless of load or without load still give me 30 miles now which is actually very good for this price range very powerful bike with a large battery over here i usually walk because we have a lot of like some stretch over here so that's a place usually you would need to have walk mode because the bike usually heavy any bike electric bicycle that's why you have a walk mode the walk mode is works pretty simple on this bike as well you just push this button like the down arrow and hold it and now it helped me to walk it's activated i think about only three miles an hour like without any uphill it'll go about five miles an hour and sounds like people complain that it's too fast back on the bicycle and now back to pedaling I think the sounds coming from my back, which one I have, and I have some loose stuff inside, but the bicycle feels very solid. And if you need more torque, you just throttle, but actually, it's going uphill pretty good and we're almost to the top of the hill here it's a very beautiful day and we're gonna go more upright more ri riding so far the bike is good the only things i have uh, a little bit worried that i got actually killed the motor but so far looks the motor is fine <coughs> And this one is one of the steepest hill and I'm gonna change to level one just in case but this one is one of the steepest uh, almost get a wheelie but look on this beautiful weather wow it's so nice over here and I'm gonna go up there now and that's the last hill 
which also actually is steep. But the one we just passed, one of the, was the steepest and also hardest to get on. I almost got a wheel because so much power in this bike. And oh, you see, I think I overheat it again. Again, air code nine, the bike basically stopped. The throttle will not work. Now, almost made it, but not all the way up. Let's see if I turn it off. Turn it on again. And so far no code. Only code number two, it's a brakes engaged. Okay, now good. So it takes about one minute actually a few seconds to cool down I will still uh, uh, ask for a new controller just in case because sometimes the controller defected I know like they had some controller issue before I replaced couples but the motor is good 09 they told me it's controller so I made it all the way to the top beautiful day beautiful weather uh, the spring is coming and it was fun to ride this another bike uh, I think it's a great bicycle I have reviewed like three I think or four of Sinada Sabres every year they send me another like upgraded model as I said earlier the forks actually works good as you can see it's about 100 millimeter travel uh, fork never get bottom down so it basically works good i don't use lock lock down but you can also lock it down if you need it on pavement uh, but on off-road i usually keep it open so it will be better performance not that shaky i did put too much pressure in the tires so 10 on the front 15 on the back would be perfect most likely the recommendation on the tires is between 5 to 15 i believe and you can put up to 30 psi uh, gear shifting is great right now i'm actually on the highest you can see on the largest one and it's mid, really easy to get on the hill for me i pedal very lightly so the cotton sensor works great on this bicycle i noticed a little bit improvement it's not as jerky as it used to be it's uh gave you better pedaling experience also uh, the handling a little bit better, I noticed. I think the handlebar a little bit wider, it's 27 inches now. I don't remember how much it was before, but also it comes now. I think last year also had horn, uh, bell, turn signals is great for the street riding. Cutoff always was there, it's good just in case, so you will not get uh, on accidentally. And then you got really long the bar. I think before it was shorter, so it would touch the seat. Now you can attach actually even larger. I'm gonna check with the Sinada bikes if they have a longer bag because you can get uh, really long. I need longer because this one for me is like 12, uh, 12, 12 liters, I think. They have, um, I think if they have longer one, would be perfect fit for this bike. But, a really nice bicycle if you're looking for one check link in description they do have a step through model which is a mayor i did review that bike as well i'll post link in description uh mayor is 750 watt motor really great so check link in description for extra discount and that will support me and it will cost you nothing and thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye